Hey kiddos, um, we're going to do uh, some homework pages. This is the homework page number one for day one homework. Um, I'm going to do the highlighted problems here, so follow along with me and you guys try to do the rest for me. Okay, so number one says rewrite the following numbers in scientific notation. So I look at this letter A, this number that I have right here. I need this number in scientific notation. In order for a number to be correct in scientific notation, it can only have one non-zero number in front of the decimal point. So I have to find my decimal point. So where is my decimal point here? Right, it's at the end. It's understood even though it's not there. It's understood to be at the end. So I move my decimal point until I have one number that's not a zero in front of it. So I move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. When I move it seven places, I now have a non-zero number in front of it. One is a non-zero number, it's not a zero. So my number in scientific notation is one point, and then you write all the significant digits. Well, how do I know which ones of these are significant? Remember the zeros? Okay, well here, these three zeros are at the end, but there was not a decimal point before I put one there. There was no dot there. So if there's no dot, then those zeros are not significant. So these are not going to be included in my number. How about this zero here? Right, it's captive in between two non-zero numbers. So it is significant. So my final answer is going to be 1.0459 times 10 to the seventh. Why did I put times 10 to the seventh? Right, because I moved the decimal point seven places to get it to here. Okay, let's try the next one. 0 0.00004857. Okay, I have to do the same thing. I see the decimal point here, but I have to move it until I have one number that's not a zero in front of it. Well, this is a lot of zeros, so I need to move. So I move it one, two, three, four, five places. I move it five places because now I have a number that's not a zero in front of it and then I write all the significant digits. So are these zeros significant? I see a decimal point but these zeros are not final zeros. In order for them to be significant they have to be at the end of the number. They have to be final zeros. Well these aren't. These are just placeholder zeros. The numbers in the beginning are not significant. The zeros in the beginning are not significant. So my correct answer in scientific notation is 4.857 times 10 to the negative fifth power. Why is it negative 5? Well it's negative because the number that I started with is way less than 1. If the number is less than 1, your exponent is going to be negative. And why is it 5? Because I had to move it 5 spaces to get to a place where I had a non-zero number in front of it. Okay, Le number two. Rewrite the following numbers in decimal form. So I need to take them out of scientific notation and put them into standard notation. So 3.45 times 10 to the seventh, I need to take that decimal point and move it seven places this way. How do I know to move to the right? Well, I know to move to the right because seven is positive. And if the number's positive, that means it's going to, the number is going to end up being greater than 1. Well, if I move the decimal point to the left, the number would not be greater than 1. It would be less than 1. So let's start moving it 7 places. So I'll move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then I'd stop. Well, what goes in these spots right here? Zeros. So my answer is 345 and I've got all these zeros, one, two, three, four, five, five zeros, one, two, three, four, five, comma, and a comma. So 34,500,000 is my final answer. Letter D, 6.094 times 10 to the minus fourth. Well, it's a negative number, so my decimal point's going to go to the left. Okay, it's going to go to the left because this number, it's got to be less than one, not greater than one. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, four places, park a zero and put, or I'm sorry, park a decimal point and put zeros in those places that I move the decimal point. So the answer here is point zero, 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 
six, zero, nine, four. Final answer. Okay, number three. How many significant figures are in each of the following? Okay, letter B here. 3.41 times 10 to the seventh nanometers. Well, remember what I told you in the, in the um, notes, all the numbers that are in front of the X, if your number's in scientific notation, all the numbers in front of the X are significant. So there's three sig figs here. Letter D. Okay, all of these non-zero numbers are significant. Zero is significant. Why is it significant? Because it's a final zero and there's a dot. Is there a dot? Yes, there is. So that means all zeros to the right of the decimal point are significant. Final zeros, sorry. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five sig figs. Okay, do you see a decimal point? No, you do not. If there is no dot, that means that the final zeros are not significant. Yes, I know these are final zeros, but there's no decimal point, so they're not significant. So in this number, there's one sig fig. Letter I, zeros in the beginning, even if there's a decimal, zeros in the beginning are never significant. Are these in the beginning? Yes, they are. Okay, so there's only three sig figs in this number. Letter J, these two numbers, these two zeros are not significant. That one is because it's in between two non-zero numbers. And that final zero is significant because it's a final zero after the decimal point. This is not a final zero. That's a final zero. It's at the end. So how many sig figs in this number? Four. All right, number four. Round off each of the following measurements to three significant figures. Okay, three sig figs for letter A. So I, that would be one, that would be one, and that would be one. Okay, when you're rounding numbers, you find your last sig fig and the number just to the right tells you whether to round it up or leave it alone. You don't get to look, you don't get to look at any other numbers, okay? You only look at the number next to your final sig fig. It doesn't matter if there's a string of 20 numbers behind it. You only look at the one number next to your last sig fig. So since that's an eight, it'll round that up to a one. So the final answer is 92.1. Okay, this thing needs to be three sig figs. One, two, three. Okay, then I look at the number right next to my last sig fig, that nine. That nine will round that up to a five, and these two things become zeros. So it should be one, oh, one two, five, zero, zero, 12,500. That's how you would round that. Don't round this to 125. Don't go, oh, that's, that's going to be rounded to a five, so that's 125. Seriously? Seriously, if I owed you $12,499 and I said, how about I just round it up and I'm going to give you $125? Oh, that's not, that doesn't even make sense. Okay, so don't take those numbers off. They just turn into zeros. All right, letter G. You need three sig figs. One, two, three. All right, the number right next to it, what happens? It rounds that thing up. So my final answer, nine, zero, one, zero. Okay, that doesn't drop off and become nothing. It just turns into a zero because you round it up. Okay, number five, perform each of the following calculations then round your answer so that it's expressed in the correct number of significant figures. Okay, so let's figure out how many sig figs in letter B first. Remember that when you add or subtract numbers, you have to round your final answer to whichever number has the least number of digits after the decimal. Which one of these numbers has the least digits after the decimal? That one does. How many digits after the decimal does it have? It has zero. So my final answer gets rounded to a whole number, to no digits after the decimal. So let's go ahead and add this stuff up. Oh, maybe there we go. 22.9 plus 14.5 plus 48. Okay, 84.91. So it has to be rounded to a whole number. So that nine will round that up to a five. So my final answer, 84.91 rounds to 85. That's the correct answer. Okay, 6.75 times four divided by 0 0.0039. 
okay, we're multiplying and dividing. So when you multiply or divide, um, you round your final answer to uh, the least, uh, to, uh, what's it called? The weakest link, that was it, the weakest link. Whichever one of your numbers in your problem has the fewest total sig figs, okay, this is digits after decimal because it's add subtract. This is weakest link. The weakest link here is the four because it has the fewest number of significant digits. It only has one. So my final answer is going to be rounded to one sig fig. So I need to do the multiply first. Remember PEMDAS, so that means you have to do multiply first. 6.75 times four. And then I'm going to divide it by point, oop, oh golly. Divided by, oop, that's not going to work out either. Um, 27 divided by, there we go. 0.0039. Wow, I get to round that to one sig fig. All right, if I can only have one sig fig, it's going to be the six. Okay, that means I can only look at the number right next to it to round it. Nine is going to round that up. So do I round 6,923 to seven, or do I round 6,923 to 7,000? Right, I round it to 7,000. Okay, so that's homework page number one.